Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about Unity Gaming Services. Now, if you're regular this channel, you've probably already heard of these. Uh, these were launched back in beta in October of 2021. Uh, they're kind of a, some of it was a bit of a rebrand of products they already had, all to put them under a single umbrella, and some of them were new products launched in beta. These are things for doing like multiplayer, back ends, monetization, analytics, that kind of stuff. And the reason why we were talking about them today is just yesterday, uh, Unity Gaming Services went live. So they are no longer considered beta, uh, the UGS has graduated out of beta with tools that help developers tackle the challenges of building a live game. So we're going to look through all of the various different components that make up UGS. Uh, again, a couple of them are actually still tagged as beta, so that is a bit confusing, but the majority of these are considered production ready. By the way, this isn't Unity only. So you can see here, integrate with the engine of your choice, Unity, Unreal, Homebrew. So you can hook these into the default engine, Godot, O3DE, whatever, or your own custom engine, or you can use them with Unity and Unreal. Now, i got to imagine they're easy easiest to work with Unity because that's just the way things work. Now, there is one major problem with UGS, and we'll get to that at the end of this video because, of course, we will. So uh, it provides a number of different things, authentication, cloud saves, and so on, multiplayer networking, analytics, monetization, all the stuff that you need to have on the server side is what UGS is all about. Now, we're going to do a quick run through of the services offered. The first one is pretty straightforward, authentication. So if you need to have users that log in, that is what this provides. By the way, all of these are considered separate, and all of them have potentially their own pricing. I'm not going to get into the pricing details of all of these various different services. It can be a little bit confusing to figure out. And again, you don't have to use all of these things. You can think of this as a la carte. So if you just need authentication, you could use just the authentication piece. If you need cloud saves, you can get the cloud saves. Uh, so that's what this is all about. Um, uh, you can uh, enable players to sign in various different platform accounts, save their progress, and so on. Again, some of this is really strange, though, because this is going to say here, form parties and lobbies in your multiplayer game. Well, that's part of what the authentication piece is about. But as you're going to see, uh, we've also got that as another section. So some of the, the division between some of these services gets a bit confusing, at least to, to my simple brain. We do have cloud save. I do get this one. It's very easy to understand. This is basically cloud-based storage. So uh, progression, abilities, statistics, data, uh, save games, etc. You can save them all in the cloud using this. Uh, sort of like Amazon S3, but specifically for uh, game development, more or less. So cloud save, pretty straightforward. Again, they all have their own pricing. That was going to probably based on uh, usage and storage and so on. Uh, next up, we have lobby. So this is where I'm getting a little confused. We have a lobbying service, uh, but the earlier one also was used for making lobbies. So I don't know where one ends and the next one begins. The idea of a lobby service makes sense. It's kind of an off the chart uh, lobby there. So players can create public libraries using simple game attributes. Other players can then search, discover, and join. Invite-only lobbies allow players to create private spaces for selecting participants and so on. Um, a lot of these things do have a free tier, by the way, so you can you go through your development before you have to start paying for anything. And then later on, you can integrate it with Relay. We'll get to Relay in, well, now, actually. Relay is uh, a peer-to-peer -peer system. So this, um, it, it's a way of enabling um, so service allows you to connect your players and provide multiplayer gaming experience without the need for a costly dedicated server. Uh, so this service enables easy uh, and secure peer-to-peer -peer listen server UDP communications between players. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer technology. That means there's no server in the middle. Your clients are all talking to each other. Um, and the, uh, the big upside on that one is that you uh, don't have to pay hosting costs in that particular case because the servers are basically your clients. Now, the downside is it also kind of makes things a little bit less secure because there is no server, so you can't have server authoritative um, controls on it. Uh, but uh, if you want to add peer-to-peer -peer networking, this is an option. And again, you can mix it with their lobby component to have uh, like a lobby in front. So you use that to like bring the matches together, but the actual networking communication would then be handled uh, by the relay server. Service. Next up, we have matchmaking. Okay, so we got matchmaking and we've got a lobby. It gets a little confusing at this point in time. Now, interestingly enough, this is currently available only in closed beta anyways. Uh, so it's match the right players in the right time in the right place with the out-of-the-box multiplayer integration for our enterprise customers. So it's uh, a matchmaker uh, kind of done for you. Uh, so it, it integrates with their other services. Uh, so if you're doing like a, an online competitive game or something, you need to do matchmaking based off of region or skill levels, etc. I think that's what matchmaking is all about. Again, like I said, some of these services, even though they uh, launched today, uh, didn't. So we have a couple that are still in beta and matchmaker is definitely one of them. Uh, we also have multiplayer hosting. So again, where you draw the line between some of these things gets really, really confusing. Um, 
So purpose-built orchestration platform, uh, focus on making your game the best it can be with support for, from an integrated team of gaming specialists, integrated matchmaker to accelerate development, helping you launch on time. So this is, again, I, I don't understand. So this is a matchmaker. How is this different than the other one? So there is a little bit of confusion between these various different services. I don't know where one ends, the other one begins. Cloud code is an interesting one. Basically, you can uh, run stateless logic or basically code you just write uh, that just runs in the cloud. Uh, so it kind of gives you the ability to do a back end in an easy manner. So um, run your game in the cloud as serverless functions and interact with other back end services. It, it kind of just simplifies networking. You basically just write a function and you treat that function as if it was just normal code. Just the difference is that function is running on the cloud. Uh, so it's a way of definitely simplifying the way that your um, game logic works. Uh, so shifts your game logic away from the client, interacting seamlessly with backend services, create custom API endpoints, and make scheduled background jobs, game event handlers, and so on. Uh, so cloud code is one of the neat ones in this option. Then we have economy. This is sort of an umbrella thing for managing like um, DLC and uh, things inside of your game. So your, your internal currencies, how they're doing. It allows you to tune and scale it, see how they're going. So for managing your own in-game economy. Things like currencies, inventory items, in-game purchases, and real money purchases. It's sort of a dashboard for handling and um, analyzing how your economy is performing. And then we got cloud diagnost the diagnostics is real-time error monitoring, so you can rapidly resolve the bugs in your game. Uh, so again, it's just analytics in the cloud. Uh, then we've got uh, their voice and text chat. This is powered by Vivox, a company that they bought some time back. So if you need to integrate voice chat into your game, uh, they do have the Vivox services and they're being told under the voice and text chat uh, branding here. So if you need to have um, voice chat in your game, uh, this is a way of enabling it. Uh, and then we have uh, player engagement tools. These are just more analytics. So um, you can uh, test how players are uh, working, number of analytics tools, um, and so on. And then we've got uh, target and price users. Uh, so this is actually kind of interesting. This is about user acquisition. So um, people basically trying to get people to use your game, to get the best money for it, the tracking, the usage, and so on, how to how to basically grow your community. And then on the topic of money, and this one, again, is still in beta, we have Unity uh, Mediation. Uh, this is basically kind of an ad brokerage service as far as I understand it. Uh, enables publishers with the tools to easily expand their ad domain demand by driving more competition for their inventory, optimize network waterfalls or bidding in the Unity dashboard, and simplify setup with adapter updates. So if you're uh, managing a number of different ad sources, so ad mob, Unity ads, meta ads, and so on, uh, this is a way of having it so that people can bid for those, hopefully drive up your ad revenue and so on. And here you can see finally the dashboard. So uh, if you sign in for uh, all of the things that we looked at here are managed here. So if you've got analytics all handled here, uh, developer ops, so diagnostics and so on are all available right here. Live ops, so this is the uh, how are things going in my game. Your cloud code and your cloud save are all integrated here. Uh, you can set up push notifications for your players and so on, uh, all available right here. Uh, so we also have game override, something I didn't actually talk about earlier. Uh, they allow you to do like A-B testing. Uh, so you can have different versions for different players and test how they work. Uh, so that's another option here. Again, we've got the stuff here for acquiring users. I don't want to download your report. Uh, those options are all available here. We've got things about monetization. So if you're using Unity ads or Google ads, Facebook ads, whatever, they're all controlled under this section. And then finally, all your various different multiplayer thing, your, your VVox, your Relay, your Lobby, and your Multiplay are all controlled in this part of the dashboard. So it's all controlled in one place, which is definitely nice. So if, you, if you're deciding to use some of these services, even though like the distinction between them, where one ends and one begins, gets a little confusing. Um, once you get into the dashboard, it actually makes a lot more sense. So they've kind of got from a marketing business side of things, a confused mess. But from a management side of things, they have things pretty clean. So if you've got a Unity account, you can log into the dashboard. Uh, you can go ahead and create a project right here. I don't have one. I, I did one back in uh, October when this first launched. That's the extent of what I've got here. But your project would be here. Now, the nice thing is, again, they do have a free-ish tier. So you can come in and check all this stuff out well in development. Um, so you don't have to really start paying for this stuff until you actually start making some money yourself, uh, which is definitely useful. But now we're back to the problem that Unity Game Services has, and that 
is online game services. Epic Games online services exist, and they do pretty much the exact same stuff. So we've got account services over here uh, for logging in, for storing information, cloud save, and so on. And over here, we have things like voice chat, achievements, matchmaking, live ops, and so on. And they have their own dashboard and their own authentication server for handling all this stuff. Do you know what the big difference is? This is free. Completely free. So Epic Games Online Services, uh, if you want to add networking, doesn't matter which game engine you're using, you can use Epic Online Services to do so. So if you need voice chat, you need cloud save, you need lobbies and networking, uh, analytics, so on. Uh, basically, you can do it all for free here with Epic Online Services. And that is what Unity are competing with. So their uh, whole new Unity gaming services now out of beta have to be better than Epic um, online services which are free and that is a challenge now they're not one-to-one -one parody i don't think epic games has like the ad and monetization side of things i don't think they have the user acquisition side of things either so there are definitely some things that unity online gaming services have that epic services don't uh but what epic services do have is no price tag and that's pretty big so let me know what you think uh of these services and there's always a challenge with these because there's been previous ones like web sparks that have already gone out of business so you have to trust that the company is going to continue to support these for a long time because if two years down the road three years down the road you have to rewrite your code for a different back end it can be the death of a game when its back end goes down uh so is it worthwhile to, to roll it yourself or should you use a third-party service like this and the answer isn't really that simple but i'd be here curious to hear what you think what you think of unity gaming services in general and what do you think of them versus epics offering let me know comments down below i will talk to you all later goodbye